Okay, hi there, and welcome to the first of two videos looking at aspects of labour market failure. For many economists, the labour market is the most important market of all to study, analyse and evaluate. And like product markets for goods and services, labour markets can also fail. So we're going to look at six examples of labour market failure. In this video, we'll look at the first four, skills gaps, immobility of labour, economic inactivity, inequality and working poverty. And then in the second video, we'll take a look at discrimination and monopsony power of employers. First of all, skills gaps. So this is linked, of course, to the concept of occupational immobility. Most countries, most labour markets suffer from skills gaps, in part because employers may underprovide the amount of skills training that they need or the market requires. This is linked to the, something called the free rider problem. So, for example, a business might take on somebody and train them up, but they're unable to hold on to them. The staff retention rates may be low and those workers then leave and join a rival firm. So the free rider problem can cause an under provision of training. And that then leads to a gap or a deficit in human capital, which in turn can hold back employability for people, but also in a wider macro sense can limit productivity growth and can be a cause of structural unemployment. So how best to address skills gaps in the UK? Uh, in the recent times, the UK government has brought in the new apprenticeship levy. We'll look at that in a second. Some people argue for increased funding for STEM subjects, science, technology, English and maths. And others point to the need for a skills-based immigration policy to attract the skilled workers at different levels that a country may need. Migration is an important aspect of the skills gap. Here is the data for migration data for the UK. The two charts show the net flows of migration in in terms of uh, number of people coming in and people going out. Uh, in the UK, if you look on the right hand side, an estimated 283,000 people more came into the UK with an intention to stay than left in the year ending September 2018. So 627 people arrived in the UK, that's immigration, 345,000 people left, that's emigration. So the green line there is the net figure for the UK. If you look on the left hand side, net immigration from the EU is falling, but actually net immigration from outside the EU is rising. Hence the, the, the relatively slow fall in net migration overall. So apprenticeships are important in terms of the skills gap. Apprenticeships are paid jobs that incorporate on and off the job training. And uh, if you're an apprentice, you can qualify with a nationally recognised qualification if you complete your apprenticeship contract. The UK government in 2016 brought in the apprenticeship levy. So this means that all employers with a, a total pay bill of more than £3 million per year have to pay 0.5% of that, of their pay bill, into an apprenticeship pot, which goes to the government. They're allowed to take out £15,000 per financial year themselves. The funds generated by the levy are designed to be spent on apprenticeship training costs, and the government provides a bit of top-up. Now, there's some evidence so far that the apprenticeship levy isn't working as intended. So some people are saying this is a possible cause of government failure. Um, a lot of the apprenticeships tend to be high-level ones, um, often degree-level apprenticeships, rather than maybe level two, level three apprenticeships. Uh, last year, only 10% of the money in the apprenticeship levy pot was actually spent. And there's some, uh, there's some debate at the moment about whether the apprenticeship levy needs to be reformed to make it more flexible so that businesses can tap into the money more easily and provide entry-level training that, that people need. A second cause of labour market failure is geographical immobility of labour. This uh, geographic mobility is the ability of people to move around an area, a region, a country in order to find work. And of course there are many reasons why people may suffer from geographical immobility. Close family and social ties, uh, housing affordability problems, if you're moving from country to country, visa restrictions could be a barrier, the cost of commuting to and from work, and if you're moving from another country, but potentially cultural and language barriers. Now the one I'm going to focus on in this video 
is housing affordability. This is an absolutely crucial problem in the UK. Many people cannot afford to buy a house, to move and buy a house. Many people can't afford to move and rent a house. So housing affordability is a major issue. Uh, the chart on the right hand side suggesting that even for a couple, uh, it can take uh, nearly nearly 10 years to save enough to buy a, to save enough for a deposit on a house purchase. And renting is also a major challenge. In some parts of the country, uh, the rental costs per month take up over half people's disposable incomes. So what can the government do to improve housing affordability, to, ad to address the problem of geographical mobility? Well, here are some options. One is to increase spending on social housing, increase the amount of affordable homes made available by local councils and by housing associations. Another, another option is to relax the planning laws so that more land can be freed up for housing development. In London, they're considering considering bringing in some form of rent control, uh, some sort of capping of rents in certain areas. Uh, affordable housing policies might be changed. In particular, instead of having targets for the number of affordable homes, uh, have have targets for the amount of land which is put aside for affordable homes. So you could have a, a, a set of an amount of land which is available to build on. Typically, a builder may only build a small percentage of the land in affordable properties and use the rest of the land to build much more expensive flats and, uh, and houses. Maybe you should increase the amount of the percentage of the land which must be allocated to affordable homes. Some people think the answer is subsidies for home buyers, including help to buy. Others think that just drives up property prices. And going forward in the long term, it's important to encourage innovation in house building. Are there ways we can find to bring down the cost and increase the speed of uh, construction in the building industry? Whenever you get uh, some policy interventions, always be prepared to analyse. So, for example, a rent control diagram and evaluate the impact of these kind of interventions. Economic inactivity is another cause of labour market failure. So economic activity, inactivity is that part of the working age population which doesn't have a job and is not actively seeking work. Therefore, these people are not part of the working population. Again, lots of reasons for economic inactivity. People choosing to stay on in full-time education a-levels and degrees and full-time um, other, other full-time qualifications. People who can't look for work because they're caring for an ill relative or raising a family. People suffering from chronic illness or disability. And also people who have effectively given up the search for work. Perhaps they've been long-term unemployed. They feel their skills are no longer viable in the modern labour market. Now, inactivity is clearly a problem, clearly a labour market issue because there are people of working age who, for one reason or another, are not part of the active labour force. This chart is quite interesting. It looks at e economic inactivity rates since uh, 1970. Uh, inactivity for women has been falling quite steadily over the last 45 years, from 45% down to around 25%. For males, however, in economic inactivity has been rising. It's a modest improvement in the last few years, but it has been a trend increase. And the gap between the two has has reduced. So what can we do again to address this labour market issue? How can we reduce the scale of economic inactivity? Well, the government's brought in some tax-free childcare, which in theory should help improve the affordability of childcare for working families. Although there are obviously doubts about the quality of some of the childcare. Improving the incentive to find work, perhaps perhaps through a minimum wage going up or getting more firms to sign up to the living wage could help to make work pay and maybe tilt the, uh, the, the balance between being on benefits and finding work. In the long term, again, improving educational outcomes, ma making sure that people are leaving full-time education with the right skills, the right qualifications to give themselves a fighting chance. Improving to investment in health and social care are important as well. So providing better health care, better social care, which might release people to find perhaps a part-time job. And obviously welfare reforms have a part to play, perhaps linking welfare to economic activity, actively searching for work, trying to reduce the extent of the poverty trap, for example. Again, be prepared to evaluate each of those options. Another aspect of labour market failure 
the last one in this section is the whole concept of working poverty. Now, this has become a substantial issue in the UK in the last few years. We define working poverty as where is where there's a family with at least one person in a paid in a paid job, but they have a household income that keeps them below the official poverty line. The poverty line in the UK is normally set at about 60% of median income. And the Joseph Roundtree Foundation, one of the leading research bodies in this area, have said that the number of people um, number of people in work but in poverty has reached 4 million in 2018. About one person in eight of the employed labour force are now classified as working poor. Now this, this is a major problem and it's not just applicable to the UK. In many countries there's been a significant rise in the scale of working poverty over the last 10, 20 years. In part this has been caused by stagnant or even falling real wages for millions of people in, in below average paid jobs. Trade union memberships declined. Many of the new jobs offer fairly limited job security and an uncertain income stream every week and every month. You may well be familiar with the rise of the gig economy and the increasing number of people on zero hours contracts. So working poverty in the UK is a big aspect and to some economists who are concerned about this, it is an important aspect of labour market failure. If you want to check out our revision resources on labour markets, just uh, just point your smartphone at the QR code there and that should get you to our landing page for labour market economics. Thank you for joining in this first video.